my mystery used to say, you know, uh, uh, that horses were, were trained, they just uh, teach us the way they like to be ridden. You can train a horse out of fear, any animal actually, out of anything you want. You can train him with love, you can train him with fear, you can train him with all the nuances be between those, and you can um, train them by pain, uh, you can train them all sorts of ways. If you have a good relation with your horse, everything is going to be easy. and work in hand is a is a is an overall good therapy for any type of a horse um, a, a young horse or a horse who come in training with me we spend some time two weeks three weeks just lunging and working hand until they feel good in their body and their and their mind and then you sit on them and you you have done a tremendous uh, progress if i wanted to sit on the on, on, on those horses immediately uh, bef when they came i would create a lot, a lot of problems for, for for me Therefore, it's a, it's, 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 it's a way of creating a relationship and a position in which they are comfortable. And therefore, it's money in the bank as far as I'm concerned. You'll start seeing the horse, how is the muscles can soften and relax and work. You're going to, it's the horse-wise, you'll start seeing the horse is more balanced. It's easier for him. You'll see a difference in stride developing. And lunging isn't something that you need to spend massive amounts of time doing after a while. Once the horse is going and he's able to keep the position on both sides, is comfortable there on both sides, it's not a matter of a lot of time that you need to do it then. An animal resists as people think what they don't understand. And what they don't understand is when some movement or so we are asking them something new who come from out of the routine and they say, I don't know, what does that relate to? They, they need to have a continuation, very much like you know, very much like human, the little kids go to school and they, they know that they can scream and yell and then they have to go two by two and they have to go to the classroom and then they have to sit and then they do this and that and that. they have a certain order of, of things and, that's, and I think it helped the, the learning process. But what I would like you to uh, see today is what we are having as far as equipment on the horse. We are having a lens line that you can see I go through the bit and attach to the girth here, which, which allows me a lot to uh, have those little pull to allow my horse to be in the correct position here. Therefore, you, you will see in motion that give me a lot of possibility to adjust the head carriage. Then what I'm going to do is roll those reins here after my friend Romeo is holding the lounge for me. Here we go. Therefore, we are rolling the, the rein underneath the neck like so and put it through. Uh, Put it through here, and that way the horse can stretch his neck and still be uh, in the correct position and do not get worried about his reins. Here we go. For a more advanced horse, this is called a double bri bridle, and this is um, a, a snaffle, what we call a Bauche snaffle, B-A-U-C-H-E-R, from Francois Bauche, the, the French. Uh, uh, the French rider. And the, 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 the special thing about that bit is that when you uh, play with the fingers right here, it allows the horse to go a little bit lower, a little bit rounder. Sometimes people say, what about lunging cavison? Lunging cavison is something that we put on, on the horse when they are very, very young. Um, sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't use it. It's a very uh, um, personal thing. Most of a, uh, of a cavison that we have now are too thick, me meaning they protect the nose of the horse too much and the horse doesn't respect it. Stirrups, uh, sometimes down on young horses that they get used to a little of a, of a touching of the, of the stirrups with a, a, a horse of a more maturity. What I do is I put my stirrups up and I just do a little nut in there. That way they get out of the way and they don't, the horse don't get disturbed. That's it, as so. And then I put my end there to get through it, and it's done. Those side reins, which are the most uh, um, practical one, with a rubber donut here, with a ring, that basically have a just a little give, who sort of st simulate your opening and closing of the finger, the same one when you, you ride. Side reins who are attached to the girth, and I w I, I, as you can see, it's through the girth, that way I can higher it or lower it depending on which level I want the head carriage to be. 
for generally I just hook it up to the um, bit right here and of course we will talk about the size and the, the length of it in order to allow the horse to be in the correct position. We do a lot of crossing and the horses interfere from sometimes with one leg to another and if they bang their, their leg then they can have a little problem of tendon and so forth so on. Therefore what we like to do is put those simple boots as you see or a polo bandage to, just to protect their leg there. Um, of course very important for you protect your hands with gloves. Uh, if you don't have gloves, it is that you can get burned uh, very easily when the horse makes a subtle movement. Therefore, try to get a lounge line in cotton. They are much nicer than the nylon one, number one. And then secondly, please wear your gloves. It's very important. As far as holding the, the lounge line, what's very important is that you have it hold that it can, can out of your hands without your hands getting caught. Therefore, what not to do, as you see a lot, is you see people just, just rolling their things just like this, and then they can get caught. It's very, very dangerous. Therefore, when you, when you, um, when you have your, your uh, launch line, you just make nice li little loops in, in the way that when the horse is going to launch around you, that launch line is going to go out of your hands very smoothly and you are not going to get caught into it. It's very important to be able to have a physical contact with the horse, um, not to touch him to hurt or to punish or to uh, discipline him, as people think, but to touch as um, the horse respect somebody that can hold something and touch them, because they can't do that. You stand, of course, at the, at the center of the circle, and you try not to move, to move as little as you can, that the horse know where you are, okay? That's important. And then, of, of, of course, you, you hold the, the lounge line in one hand, which is the hand with, uh, towards the, the, the front of the horse. And, of course, your whip is uh, uh, at the back of the horse. And you try to be in a sort of a triangle in relation with the horse, with the feeling that you are behind the horse. Uh, we will see with young horses that get confused as far as positioning, uh, they, they need to feel that you are behind them always in order for them to go around you. The number one very important thing is to have your horse forward. And then when the horse is going forward, then we want him to go forward and round at the same time, that he could be on the bit and relax and forward. That's what we want to achieve. That the, the horse is going to be happy in his uh, uh, mental and physical attitude. And when he's going to be happy in that position, then we can sit on him and just reproduce what we were doing uh, from, the, from the ground. Therefore, um, you, the same mental process that you use all the time, the visualization, the click with the tongue, and the touch with the whip. You will do it for the lounge, for the working hand, and for the riding. And that's really will uh, uh, will give great power to, you, to your visualization to know it's carried on through all the movement.